I just got done making the video of feminism's destruction in the Bible. I also mentioned that I have a cold and a sore throat, so I'm losing my voice a little. Despite that, I still have a couple videos I'd like to make, and they're quite important. You know, God clearly says there's nothing new under the sun, and I can prove to you evolution is wrong. And I could prove so by showing you that throughout the history of mankind, we have never learned from our mistakes. We continue to do them over and over and over again. You know, some people say, how can the Bible be from modern day times? The Bible was designed to complete a cycle. And you could see the cycle throughout history repeating itself. And as a matter of fact, 2015 today, that we live in 2015 today, means that goodness has always conquered evil. For 6,000 years, goodness has always conquered evil. But you see, the reason why the Bible relates to 2015 is that the Bible just completely does a circle. Not everything comes through every time. Some things take events to happen, but you have to understand things like Hitler, World War I, all these situations. It's always good versus evil. Every war you ever see is good versus evil. Sometimes it's evil versus evil, but goodness always prevails. So the Bible is going to continuously repeat itself until goodness can no longer prevail. And this is when goodness will cry out to God to send Jesus back down to earth, where Jesus will then come and set the earth straight. It seems almost like every generation now is forgetting its previous generation. You do not learn from your mistakes. World War II did not take 10 to 20, 30 years to create. It happened in a mere five years. It can happen at any time again, folks. You have to be smarter than this. You have to know what you're doing. Nothing in this world is free. When somebody wants to offer you something for free, there's usually a catch to it. You know, when your president promises you free health care, that should be a major red flag that something's not right. You should know by now because your parents should have educated you. They should have known from their parents. And on and on and on. You see, you're all replicas of Adam and Eve. Every one of you is a copy from a copy from a copy. You have evolutionists today saying, if, if we were created, God made a poor creation. Well, if that's the case, then I ask for you right now to go to a photocopy machine and take a photocopy of any picture in a magazine, and then take more copies of it, and take about a couple of millions of copies of it, a couple of billion copies, and see if they're just as good as the original still was. That's how we work as humans. We, we keep procreating. But what we're really doing is just remaking ourselves up new all over again. Up new is how they would say it in Dutch. We keep making ourselves over again. We take our genes and pass them on to the next generation. We are just basically copying ourselves. You know, everybody that's alive today has actually been alive for 6,000 years, but you never think about it that way. Your bloodline, your heritage is 6,000 years old. You all come from Adam and Eve. At one point, your blood was sitting on the Ark of Noah. You know, Noah's Ark. Your bloodline was sitting on that boat, too. Everything that is alive today was once on that boat. Maybe not the specific one that you have, not your specific dog that you have, but its ancestors sat on that boat. We all sat on that boat. And it's time to remember our legacy because this new governmental creation out there wants to destroy all of our heritage wants to make us forget everything that we ever were. It wants us to focus on what we will become. 
and they're going to masquerade this in by saying that mankind is at the pinnacle, like this new, uh, well, if I put it in Dragon Ball Z terms, like humanity is going to go Super Saiyan 3 or something like that. They're thinking that humanity is going to evolve into the next step. But humanity is de-evolving. If you look at mankind, how they behave, they're only one step away from animals, okay? Give a right crisis and they will turn into animals. We're not evolving, folks. Evolution is a scam. And with that said, I also want to say that the TV show, The Big Bang Theory, every week you're being scammed and spammed with this theme song. But if you ever bother to read the words, you'll see that you're being brainwashed into believing the theory of the Big Bang. You know CERN as well is going to try to rip open the fabric of time and space to prove the Big Bang Theory. We have a bunch of people right now that have built the most biggest machine on the planet that decided they want to create antimatter, and these are people not even believe in God. So while we already know there is a spiritual realm out there, that yin and yang really means the spirit realm and the earthly realm, and in between is the veil. So when you look at the symbol of yin yang, you'll see black and white. You'll see a line in between them separating them. That's the veil. That's the veil that God talks about. We are looking right now at CERN, and CERN is actually threatening the entire world and the universe by trying to open this portal right now. We already as Christians know there is a spirit realm. We don't need to see it. We're not trying to force God. We're not trying to rip open God's curtain. They're absolutely insane to try this. Even Stephen Hawking says they're absolutely insane to try this. Uh, actually, well, let me think of one second what his real words were. Uh, oh yeah, the, the humanity will have the ultimate wake-up call. Does that sound like something you want to have? It's the biggest machine in the world to open up a pit. Now, do I believe that this might be the pit of hell? No, I do believe that they're trying to open up a portal to the spirit realm. It's not a delusion, folks. This is all real. You all don't understand the occult, what's going on in your lives. I want to tell you this. They do everything to you in plain sight. They cloak it, calling it entertainment. They do it to you in plain sight so they can get rid of their own guilt because they can always say, see, we told you so all along, but you didn't stop us. You could have stopped us at any time, folks. We, we gave you movies that showed, us, showed you exactly what we were going to do, but you didn't care to stop us. It's all your fault. Remember, the narcissist always blames somebody else. They will literally destroy the world and then blame somebody else for it. Most people today do not believe that such evil exists. They believe that's only in movies and in stories. It's in reality, folks. I mean, even the Tower of Babel was a portal to heaven. There are staircases to heaven that is no joke. But what CERN is trying to do right now is going to try to rip open the portal to tear down the shroud that separates the spirit realm from the earthly realm. And when that happens, the Bible has nothing good to say about it happening. It talks about it in full detail. And none of it's good. But CERN's going to activate in September. And I told you all to keep your calendars marked for September 28th. I told you this in many videos. Mark your calendars for September 28th. Something big is going to happen. I am not sure if they're going to rip the portal open or not. I'll be right back. I have to uh, change the recording. I can only record at 10 minute intervals. For me, this is part two. For you, it's still one long continual video. I was talking about CERN and how they're trying to open up a gateway. You know, that television show, The Big Bang Theory, is used to promote what CERN is trying to do. When you understand that everything in this world that you've seen and that's highly paid for, 
where there's a lot of pushback against, where people are really pushing the spread to the masses. Usually those things are very dark and demonic. If you understand what's going on, you can, you can see it all very clearly. The devil wants to convince you that everything is not real, that it's just entertainment. Don't look at the man behind the curtain. Which was a metaphor, of course, from the Wizard of Oz when Toto pulled the curtain back and exposed the wizard sitting there and set up a big giant head. When you see what the devil is doing, you can see all of his tricks. And I feel sometimes like I'm just sitting here warning everybody constantly, and I'm wondering if anybody's really seeing it. I've noticed that I've woken up a few MGTOWers out there, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm happy that they've actually stepped over and that they understand now. I'm trying to bring you the story that you're never told, and uh, I could do it. It just takes a little while, and I can't get it done in every time on one video. They're going to, if you know what the Masons are trying to do, they're trying to open up the, the portal to release the Nephilim. You know, every country, every country in the world, I'm sorry, there goes my voice. Every country in the world has worked on CERN. Everybody, even enemies of each other, have been working side by side with CERN. This is a serious ordeal, and people are too busy with themselves to even notice it. This, this structure is humongous. You got some of the world's biggest brains out there saying this is deadly and wrong. You got Christians out there saying this is really going to turn out to be something bad. And really, we don't want CERN to be activated, but it probably will. I mean, we can't stop it. I mean, you know, let, let God's will be done, right? So that'll probably take place very soon, around the September... I've heard other stories about this blood moon that's coming. So, see, I'm basing everything off the last blood moon, folks. There's been four blood moons with an incredible super moon in between in the last two years. And September's going to be the last blood moon, September 28th. This is why I say something bad is going to happen. Something gigantic and something biblical is going to happen on September 28th. Many people actually believe that Jesus is going to return. That's not true because the Bible has a lot of things that have still not been happened yet. A lot of prophecy needs to be fulfilled still. But there's also a lot of prophecy that has been fulfilled. I think if you took a hundred prophecies of what it would take for Jesus to return, you, I think we've done about 77 out of 100. If you were just to take up a hundred prophecies, I mean, even things like things that are completely out of everybody's control. Like, okay, let's just say, for example, that the Illuminati is influencing the world to believe that the world is coming to an end. That they're trying, let's just say that the Illuminati is trying to push the biblical book of Revelations so to bring it to some anti-climatic anti anti ending instead of the glorious ending that the Bible promises. That would be a great way to throw off humanity from believing in a religion, right? making the book of Revelation seem like it's going to happen, and then it just fizzes out, duds out. That would make a lot of people give up on religion. And I think that's what their real plan is, to make the book of Revelation seem like it is coming true, but then bring no end result, just staging it all. That's a possibility. It's a real, genuine possibility. But there is also a possibility that cannot be ignored, such as Jesus prophesying, that the Sea of Galilee would dry up. And that is now happening. That there would be blood moons. That is happening. But there are a lot more other things that are happening right now. I don't want to get into it too much. I'm getting really tired with, with my voice. It's hard to talk. But I'm just trying to say there are a lot of prophecies that have been fulfilled already. And one of the biggest ones was the reestablishment of Israel I mean, it even says that the, that generation shall not die, shall not pass until Christ returns. I mean, that generation, that's what, 100 years. So let's take 19, what is it, 1947, 1946, and just count up 100 years. That's 2046 at the max. We are already in 2015. We don't know when he's coming back. But he promised that he's going to come back like a thief in the night. Unexpected. Completely throw everybody off guard. Those that love him will be saved by him. 
those that don't love him will be destroyed by him. And as a man who understands a lot of male pain and suffering, and knowing that pain and suffering can lead you away from the Bible, here is somebody who has suffered just like you, of trying to pull you in, so you don't go down with the ship when that day comes. I have no ill intent for you. I have no desire to steer you in the wrong direction. I don't talk with scripts. I don't pre-type what I'm going to say. I don't do any of that. I just talk to you like a normal human being would to another human being. I want you saved so that you can be... How do I, so that all your suffering on earth will be worth something. You see, when you don't believe in God, all the suffering you've endured in life and all the love that you've served in life will just evaporate at the end of your life. Or it could be a reward. God said it'll be a reward. He knows all your suffering. He knows all your heart. He knows everything about you. All he wants from you is that you contact him and take that first step and invite him. People always say to me, why can't I find God? Or it should prove to me that God is real. I can't do that. You yourself have to invite him in. Talk to him. Say, okay, to the father of Isaac, to the God of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob, I want to know if you're real. Just show me if you're real or not. Forgive me of my sins. Uh, cleanse me of my illnesses. Uh, strengthen me with the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash me in his blood. Write my name in the book of life. Please show me the true, lift the veil of insanity off my eyes. If you basically just ask for those things, and then sign off by saying, in, in the name of Jesus, your son, uh, amen. If you basically just say a simple prayer like that, he will contact you. He will step up. You have to invite him. And you don't have to uh, get on your hands and knees, put your hands together. That that's that's not all really true. You can also just talk to him like you like talking to like how I'm talking to you guys right now. And you will hear in your head a voice back. If you don't believe me, just say, Hey Jesus Christ, I want to know if you're real right now. Please forgive me of my sins. And then just simply watch how how you start feeling right afterwards. Listen to what your body's telling you afterwards. Just feel the the weightlessness you're gonna feel. The, the sensation of floating, that's because your sins have been forgiven. And how can your sins be forgiven unless Jesus Christ is real? This is War Dove's Fire. Despite having a sore throat, still had to bring that message to you all. Saying good night all. Have a good evening. Bye.